Thanks for your support as a channel member, Rob Pontin. Just a little public service announcement to start things off today. I know a lot of you have bought Football Manager already using my link with a previous partner who were working with the channel to provide discounted copies of the game. Unfortunately, that discount code no longer available. I think we sold too many. However, we do have an alternate partner in place in place already. I've now partnered up with CD Keys and as of the time of recording, which full disclosure is a couple of days before the video comes out, so the price could change. Hopefully it hasn't. But as of the time of recording, you can get the game for $28.99 using my link down below. Um, and just like with the one before, it supports the channel as well. So you get the game for a great price. I get a little bit of commission for sending you their way. Link is down in the description, both links for in the EU and the rest of the world. So if you haven't bought the game yet, there's a way to buy the game. And thanks for the ongoing support and all that. Hello and welcome to part 13 of my FM20 B to Sabre Manchester United. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have the first game of the Premier League season away against Sheffield United and the European Super Cup at, again, well not at, but against Paris Saint-Germain. Obviously, there's not much has happened since you were last with me because you were last with me about 12 hours ago in game. Um, but just as a summary of the transfers for anyone who has missed the last two bumper length episodes, um, we did win the FA Cup. We won the Europa League. We finished second in the Premier League and we celebrated by spending £338 million in the summer, bringing in Harry Kane, Jadon Sancho, Erling Haaland, Ruben Diaz and Frank Kessie. Um, major departures. Uh, Marcus Rojo's left the club. Um, who else was a class as major? Phil Jones. Um, Eric Bailly, Juan Mata, Alexis Sanchez, plus a load of the youngsters have gone out to the championship on loan. I would class this as an excellent summer. Somehow, because of the extraordinary amount of money at Manchester United, we've done all that. There's still over £300 million in the bank um, and we're still within all the budgets. It's just... We're still within all the budgets. It's a crazy, crazy world. Um, but... Today is all about the league and we're getting to see a debut. We saw a few debuts in the Charity Shield in yesterday's episode, Harry Kane scoring on his debut. Um, but today we finally get to see the debut of new record signing Jadon Sancho on the right-hand side of midfield. So this is the team that's going out there to take on Sheffield United. We've got De Gea in goal, a back four of Gaia, Maguire, Diaz and wan -Bissaka. Pogba and Kessie in midfield, Rashford, Rodriguez and Sancho behind Kane up front. Uh, Christian Eriksen still injured for a few more weeks, as is oh, Twanzebe still out for a little while. Yeah, a couple of months left for him. Um, but everyone else, um, oh, and the the Chris Smalling deal that yesterday it, the game told us it had fallen through. It could still be going through. And I've also revived the deal for uh, Madison from yesterday's episode as well. My theory being he's still super cheap. Let's just have him come in in January when he's fit again, because. Like I say, he meets he meets the criteria for what a Manchester United signing should be under our club vision. He's English, he's under 23, so it seems silly not to bring him in when James Rodriguez is already 30. We'll just bring him in. We can have three attacking midfielders in the squad for the rest of the season and then sell James next summer. It seems like... It seems like a sensible piece of long-term transfer policy to me. Uh, but we're not worrying about transfers anymore. I've spoken about transfers for the last three or four hours recording the transfer special that you watched yesterday. Now, it's all about matches. And this stupid thing has gone in the wrong place again. So that's... I don't know why it does this. It isn't going to move, is it? Ridiculous. What does that do? It's been there for years and I still don't know what it does. Um, let's not, it's there as well. What have I done now? Go away, little arrows. I don't like them. I hope they're going to go away after this highlight. wan now, in space, on the right-hand side, plays it into Sancho. Our first look at Jaden Sancho in a Manchester United shirt. Um, wan beats his man, beats him again, plays it into Sancho. Sancho back to wan who finds Pogba in a shooting position. It's just wide from Paul Pogba. Those stupid arrows haven't gone away. Let's just... There you go. No, I thought they'd come back, but no. Sheffield United just had a player booked already. The silly arrows hadn't come back. But, frustratingly, this stuff's still in the wrong place. Right, we can move that now. Which is good. Can we move this? I don't know why I have to do this so often. No, that isn't... 
That's just going to be annoying. I don't think there's anything we can do about that. Um, Sancho now cuts inside, finds Rodriguez, who in turn puts it out to Wambasaka, who gives it back to Sancho again. Sancho back to Wambasaka, who's in space, crosses, looking for, I think that was Rodriguez, and Pogba picks it up. The stupid arrows are back. Gaia to Pogba, back to Gaia again. And Gaia is dispossessed by Norwood, who, I be- was he a Man United youth player? I believe he was. He's on, on course for a red card today, tackling like that when he's already on a yellow card. Um, Wambasaka, that is some confident defensive work there from Wambasaka. Go away, arrows. There we go. And we made a highlight appear as well. Gaia wins the ball back, uh, plays it forward to Rashford, who's got space to run into. Run into it, he does. Um, and then he looks like he's trying to win a penalty, dancing around on the edge of the area like that. Ended up crossing for Sancho, and it's a very tame header into the hands of Sheffield United. Presumably new goalkeeper, because they don't have Henderson anymore, because he's sat on our bench. Rodriguez plays it wide to Gaia again. We are absolutely dominating this match at the moment. It's like training ground exercises, to use a lovely cliche. Um, and surely we've got a score any time now. We've had nearly 80% possession in the first nearly 20 minutes of this game, which is ridiculous. But we do now, we now had more than 80% possession. We really, really, really need to score a goal to to justify knocking the ball around the way we do. This is what we signed Harry Kane for. In situations like this, I expect him to just score a goal. But I guess he needs a chance. Rashford plays it across to Sancho, who does get, does get a chance. And Jadon Sancho has scored on his Manchester United debut. It's an assist from Rashford. He got a little bit of luck with the... It was a fairly tame effort that kind of took a deflection or a save. It was deflected somehow. Let's have a little look. So Rashford plays it across. It is... I mean, it's terrible goalkeeping. It's a tame shot straight at the keeper who kind of spills it out into the corner of the goal. Um, Sancho's obviously going to claim it, but I'd almost be inclined to put it down as an own goal because it was so terrible for the goalkeeping. Uh, Gaia out now to Wambasaka who crosses in looking for Kane. It ends up coming as far as Kessie who plays it to Gaia. Gaia has so many options. Pogba is one of them who now has the ball and it's back to Gaia again, to Pogba, to Gaia. And um, we're just going to knock the ball around now. We've taken our lead now. We're going to be unbearable for the rest of this match. wan nods down to Sancho and Sancho scored again. And that one, there's no, there's no luck there. There's no poor goalkeeping there. That's just being in the right place at the right time. And Jadon Sancho is shaping up to be having a very nice debut for Manchester United. It's a lovely cross from Gaia. wan nods it down. Sancho's there. It was your... I don't know if this is a typical football manager cross or just a Manchester United ticky-tack across because I'm not really noticing it in the Hamburg save, but the amount of times our fullbacks cross to each other, like we've just seen there. Um, but on that occasion, don't mind because it led to a goal. Sancho now has the ball again. He's going to be brimming with confidence after his first 25 minutes or so in a Manchester United shirt. Obviously fresh off the back of winning the Euros as well. England winning the Euros in the summer. And we obviously have a lot of England players Um, So they're all going to be bubbling and happy and excited because they're the best in Europe, of course. Gaia now on this left-hand side finds Pogba into Rodriguez, who sprays it out to Wambasaka. We're still on 80% possession. We're nearly at the half-hour point of the game. Um, We're just picking, waiting for our opportunity and shooting at will. It is, um, it almost feels unfair to be doing this to Sheffield United. There's absolutely no way for them to get back into this game the way we're playing. Jaden Sancho scores again, but he's disallowed for offside, I think. Are we going to the little telly? Um, it has been disallowed on review. Um, let's have a look at this from the other angle. I, I would question this a little bit. Okay, he's miles off. It's because by the time the ball got to him, he didn't look as off. It's That's pretty poor from Sancho, actually. He kind of moved closer to the goal as the as the Sheffield United defenders were stepping up. And he was offside by about eight feet, which is mad. Kane's been fouled here. I think we're getting a penalty and this is going to be the opportunity for Sancho to complete a hat-trick on his debut for Manchester United. He has. Goodness me, do I like it when you sign a player for £120 million and they justify the price. Okay, I know it's his debut and I know it's only Sheffield United, but he's only 20 years old and he's just got a debut hat-trick. That's that seems like we're gonna he's gonna be in our team for the next 10 15 years. I think when you when you look at how good he clearly is now 
and then spread his transfer fee out across the length of time he's expected to be a Manchester United player for now. It's like less than £10 million a season for for a player who's that good when he's 20. I'm excited. Um, right, we are a little bit all over the place here. Sheffield United starting to get a little bit more possession. They're up to 25% possession and they have forced a corner. This is not what I was expecting. Have we taken our foot off the gas a little bit? And they've had a shot there as well. This is utterly unacceptable. Pogba just making the point, I'm not having this. If you're going to if you're going to attack, nobody's having the ball and launches it into tier two. I assume there's a second tier. I mean, there's there's three tiers. There we go. He launched it into the third tier, I think. Um, right, just keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing. We've been absolutely exceptional in that first half. They are all complacent, but I, would, I don't I don't mind that necessarily in a game like this. Um, it almost feels cruel to go on and continue playing in the second half the way we did in that first half. Just conserve energy, knock the ball around a bit and don't let them score. Is all we, If the attack are all complacent, that's fine. Um, I like the fact Sancho's confident, not complacent. Harry Kane shouldn't be complacent this early in his United career and he should be desperately looking for a goal. In a game like this, for a player like Harry Kane, you'd expect him to score a goal. So I think he probably... He probably needs to step things up a little bit. A non-league to legend veteran in the shape of McBurney there for Sheffield United. And they have a goal back. And now we need to lose the complacency and sort ourselves out a little bit. Right, we're going to take Kane off and bring on Edward. We're going to take off Rodriguez. I'm almost tempted to bring on Haaland and go to a 4-4-2, but that seems crazy when we can bring on McTominay, stick Pogba forward and just shore up the midfield a little bit more. Um, so he can come in and do that. He's also getting very good at doing box. To, we've got three good box to box midfielders now, which is excellent. And in fact, I want to make Pogba a playmaker just so that we've got someone doing some playmaking somewhere. And that someone can be Pogba a little bit further forward. Um, I don't want to see you replay. It sickens me. And we're down to 71% possession now. We've not turned up in the second half at all. It's because I said complacency is okay. I've made this acceptable to them. Um, Gaia plays it forward to Pogba from the throw. Back to McTominay. McTominay to Maguire. And it's a ball over the top looking for, I think, Rashford. But it wasn't particularly effective. Um, and they've got a potential counter-attack going here. But Pogba wins the ball back in midfield. And it's with Sancho and Kessie and Pogba. And out to Gaia. This doesn't even sound like a Manchester United team. We've, we've changed this team a lot in a year. Um, but they're in again here and De Gea makes the save. Some things don't change. We still have De Gea there making lots of saves like a good little boy. Um, but Sheffield United with a corner and we're not really dealing with it adequately and we are drifting towards letting them back into this game. Edward's been fouled there. And um, let's have a look at what we can do for a final change. Pogba. Oh, um, can anybody else play? Sancho could go in there. Right, okay, so I'm going to take off Pogba, bring on Gnabry. So Sancho can go in there, can he? We'll do that then. Um, so you can go back to being the inverted winger you usually are. And Sancho can play number 10. Maybe that's where he'll end up playing for us. Maybe we don't need Madison after all. We've got so many wide men. Perhaps he'll develop into that role. Perhaps Should we cancel the Madison? If he scores here, we'll cancel the Madison deal. I think that's fair. If Sancho shows me he can play as an attacking midfielder as well. Uh, McTominay pr plays it out wide to wan in loads of space. And he loses out on the ball. There's only, 88, there's only 88 minutes left. There's 88 minutes gone. I don't think we can mess it up from here. But they are in on a counter-attack. And we've just given away a penalty. And I think that's Kessie who's given it away. And it's gone over to the little telly. And they have won a penalty. And we need to tell them to concentrate. Because... This is this is a worry now. De Gea makes the save from the penalty. But we need to just switch ourselves back on a little bit here. Um, I've wound up a few of them. That's fine. Be wound up. You need to sort your lives out a little bit. McTominay to Gaia. Gaia, what a pass into Rashford. And Rashford should have scored there because it was a really, really good pass. I've overwhelmed them by telling them to concentrate. Goodness me, you're Manchester United. And I'm asking you just to not throw a lead away against Sheffield United in a game you've dominated. There was nothing overwhelming about that request. 
Um, but they're, they're coming at us again here. And Gaia intercepts Sancho, plays it to Rashford. We've knocked the ball around beautifully there. It falls to Gnabry and it's the post. A fourth goal there. And I'll, just, I'll settle down a little bit and give him a little bit of praise to finish off. But it's Gnabry to take the corner. Corner comes in and is cleared, but only as far as Rashford, who's lurking, plays it back to Gnabry, who was both offside and gave the ball away. That was double uselessness from Gnabry there. My word. I think that was the last the last kick of the day anyway. I don't think this is... is it, we're getting the final whistle now? No? I mean, ref, you're supposed to blow the whistle when the ball's in the air. That's how they always do it at Posh. There you go. Now we get the final whistle and happy with the result, although we were rubbish in the second half. I probably should have told them that. Um, and now we go and play Paris Saint-Germain. If we play like we did in the first half, we'll be fine. If we play like we did in the second half, we need to worry a little bit. That was a debut and a half from him. I know I said we weren't talking about transfers anymore, but there are just a couple more to tell you about. Firstly, we have confirmed James Madison joins us on the 1st of January for a deal worth £29 million. That feels like a bit of a steal for a young English player who's just going to continue our quest towards fielding an all-English eleven at some point. Um, slightly counteracting that, we've sold an English player. Chris Smalling has gone to Napoli for £24 million, which seems like, I mean... They signed him for 10 million. He's given him 10 years. He's not good enough to get on the bench anymore. And we've sold him for two and a half times what we paid for him. That seems like good business. Um, and with all of that going on, we've still... There is a bottomless pit of money at Manchester United. All my years on YouTube, I finally found the club that was clearly designed with me to be manager in mind. Because try as, try as I might, I cannot spend all this money. The balance keeps increasing. The transfer budget never goes away. This doesn't yet feel like a Kev club. But now we really are done talking about transfers and it's time for the European Super Cup and we've made no changes to the team um, from the game, from the team that played so well against Sheffield United. We have got a big pile of substitutes. Um, Anthony Martial, um, there's been no end of loan offers from Italy um, but no one is offering to pay any of his wages. He's on £180,000 a week. I, I think we'd struggle to get 100% of his wages paid. I want at least half of that, though, to let him go on loan. If we're not actually bringing in, any money, bringing in any money, I want to at least be saving a little bit of money. I'm not letting him go and play for AC Milan or Juventus for the year for absolutely nothing. These are teams we could come up against in Europe. Or, I don't know, would he play against us in that circumstance? It happened with Chelsea years ago with Courtois, didn't it? So, presumably, I guess it depends on the terms of the loan. But I don't want him scoring against us when we're paying all his wages. Um, Sancho now on the edge of the area um, finds Harry Kane. I've not, I'm not playing him on the wing today. He's just drifted out there. Kane finds Kessie. Kessie shoots from range. What a goal from Frank Kessie. It's his first goal for the club. The only players who've scored for Man United so far this season are new signings. I said I needed to go out and find goal scorers. It seems like that... That mission has been accomplished so far. Um, Kane with the assist. Kessie with the absolute wonder strike. Okay, it's a big deflection. It's not a wonder strike. But still, he hit it so hard that it went through the Paris Saint-Germain defender and still ended up in the back of the net after deflecting off them. So I'm still going to call that. It's, it's quite impressive to kick a football that hard. Um, I'm noticing there's no Mbappé in that Paris Saint-Germain team. I don't know if that means they've sold him or he's injured. We might just check them out at half time and just see what the story is there. Because I know um, Cavani left them and went to Barcelona in the summer on a free transfer in, in Barcelona's ongoing quest to build a wonder team, apparently. Um, but I do just want to check in on what Mbappe's up to because that's, uh, that's an interesting development if Paris Saint-Germain are actually losing their best young players because they're supposed to be able to throw money at them. Um, right, Gaia plays it, or tries, he should be playing it to someone, plays it to Pogba. There you go. Big sprayed ball over to Sancho, who gives it to wan on the overlap. Those two already seem to be enjoying playing together, um, which they shouldn't be really, because um, Sancho's playing far more wide than anyone else has been before. I'm playing him as a winger, and because he's right-footed, ideally he'd be on the left-hand side. Um, but for now, he's playing on that right wing, right footed. So I'm not having him cut inside the way I do with Gnabry or James when they play over there. 
Um, so I would have expected wan to be getting in the way and them sort of standing on top of each other. If you remember way back in episode one, we had that issue with um, Ashley Young getting under the feet of presumably Lingard playing on the right wing. My word, how this Manchester United team has changed in just over a year. Um, but that's why we decided not to play with wide wingers and attacking wing backs because they were getting in each other's way. But clearly, so far, doesn't seem to be an issue for Sancho and wan um, We're going to tell him not to be complacent in this second half. We're not dominating possession quite to the extent we normally do. Hold on. I just want to check this. Where is he? Oh, he's injured. Out for a couple of weeks. There you go. So they have still got him. So they've not had one of their star players sneak away from them. I, I was hopeful for a second there that we might be able to steal some of their players. Right, Sancho's picked up a knock. So we're just going to bring... We're not going to bring Edward on for him. That seems weird. We're going to bring Gnabry on, um, who is going to go back to being the inverted winger that he usually is on that right wing because he can drift in from there and make a nuisance of himself and create a little bit more space for wan again. Rodriguez and Rashford both struggling to really get anything going today. So um, I think we'll take off Rodriguez. It's Goretzka. I guess we could bring on Pereira, but I'm going to bring on Goretzka and just stick Pogba up there. I'm, I'm certainly not against playing Pogba as the attacking midfielder. He's so good going forward that... I think we've built a solid enough midfield behind him now that the option is there to move him further forward on occasions. Although obviously we've got Madison coming in to join Ericsson and uh, Rodriguez at Christmas. So he's not going to get too many more opportunities to play there. But for now, let him have his fun. And Gretzky gets a little bit of game time. wan now plays it in to Pogba, who was looking to play Geyer in, but the pass doesn't get there. But Goretzka cleans up his mess and it's with Diaz, who plays it forward to Rashford, Rashford, Back to Gaia, who's on the overlap, crosses to Harry Kane, and it's off the crossbar. And the follow-up from Gnabry goes just wide. Who's going to be the first Manchester United player who was here last year to score for us? Because even the, the misses like that one are coming from the new signings. Rashford now um, is going to come off, and we're going to bring Martial on. Again, Edward, I'm, I'm not really interested in playing him wide. He's slow. He's, he's not really a playing wide player. He's um, he's very much first reserved to Harry Kane, which is, is, I acknowledge, isn't exactly what he signed up for when he arrived. But still, uh, Martial can come on and play when he's on the bench and he has the opportunity to come on for Rashford. It seems mad not to bring him on when he is still a very good player. He's just dropped down the pecking order a little bit here based on playing in a system that didn't really suit him last year. Kane is in behind here, does brilliantly to keep hold of the ball and get the shot away, but it, it does only lead to a corner. Um, but with 89 minutes on the clock, the ball being at this end of the pitch is all positive. Kane there with the header and it's just wide from him. And surely we've done enough at this point. Um, we've still got the ball. Um, it's now with wan who that's a terrible pass. And Goretzka wasn't expecting it and didn't really deal with it. Neymar is in behind, finds Icardi. And that's a good save from De Gea. And Paris Saint-Germain have come into this a lot more in this second half. But we seem to be adequately dealing with them at the moment. Maguire with the big ball forward towards Kane, who finds Martial. Gaia is pushing forward on the overlap again. But Martial comes inside finds Gnabry, who has lots of options inside of him, but cuts inside, and that's what we were talking about with Gnabry. He has the option to cut inside and do that, and that was brilliant, and he wins the prize of the first player from last season to score a goal for us this year, and it's the goal that just rubber stamps the win in the European Super Cup. It's another piece of silverware. We might have missed out on the Community Shield, um, but we, we've won this one, so that's nice. It's nice to get some trophies on the board or a trophy on the board early on. I'm I'm putting the Liverpool game down as a blip because, yes, we were awful against Liverpool in the Community Shield, but we've looked very good today against Paris Saint-Germain, who they're surely up there at Liverpool's kind of level. Goretzka now cannons the ball back off the crossbar and Gnabry with the follow-up hits the crossbar again. We're peppering the frame of the goal in the dying moments of this game. There's not a chance Paris Saint-Germain are getting back into it. The referee may as well just blow his whistle now because they can't even get the ball off of us. Neymar has got the ball off of us, but Gnabry has it back via wan just lumps it forward, and we're awaiting a full-time whistle now, which should come 
at the moment this ball comes back into play, I think. And um, Pogba with a massive header. I mean, he's playing as the attacking midfielder. Look how far back he's dropped there. He's our proper captain and leader. Ganabri's in behind again here, though. Cross comes over looking for Martial. Kane couldn't get there quickly enough. Uh, Martial back to Gaia. Goretzka. We don't need that final whistle anymore now. Um, we're keeping hold of the ball again. Now we'll take the whistle. Thank you. Um, Ruben Diaz just dealing with Neymar comfortably because that's what he does. And there you go. We've got a little trophy. Marvellous, marvellous stuff. I do like winning a trophy. Um, we'll give them a uh, well done, lads. Congratulations. Don't get too carried away, though. Um, we need to be fully focused as we go back into the Premier League. Sancho's going to be out for seven weeks with a calf strain. That's not ideal after the debut that we saw him have. Um, Maguire was excellent. He gets a pat on the head. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we will be back tomorrow, probably with one of these Champions League games and one of the league games around it somewhere. And um, that's usually how I do this, depending on how the Champions League groups are, whichever looks most interesting. The most interesting Champions League game in September will be what we do tomorrow, plus a league game to go with it. So, hopefully you have enjoyed that. If you have, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.